Got this Yamaha EMX 512 SC powered mixer. Problem is you try to turn it on and nothing happens. No sound, no lights. So since the unit was completely dead, powered on and nothing happens, I just started at the source of the power. Found the schematic online. Um, so you have neutral down here and your line here basically goes through the switch and I was able to just measure the voltages here, AC voltage then here there's a couple of resistors I measured those with the unit power down and those are both okay and then it looks like that's kind of for a soft start circuit after it powers up then this relay turns on and bypasses those resistors so basically it gives it a lower voltage starts up and then the relay clicks on and bypasses that and you get the full voltage. So it was good up to here. Check the fuse. That was good, voltage on both sides. And then it goes into a big uh, bridge rectifier which is on a heat sink. Voltage going in is good. Voltage coming out is good. It was... The voltages in here are pretty high because you got full AC voltage going into the bridge rectifier and then you got your output which is DC and you have some high voltage big filter caps here and here so I had high voltage DC here going down to here to this resistor so I checked that and found that was open there's voltage here, no voltage here uh, powered down one thing to watch for too is once these caps are charged, they stay charged a while, so I think the manual says about 10 minutes it takes for these to drain. So when measuring some of this stuff with an ohmmeter after you power down, you might still have voltage and then your ohmmeter won't work. Then down here there's a transistor, IGBT, and it looks like that's intended to be driven here, and then it feeds a 7815 regulator, a 15 volt regulator. So you have DC voltage in, 15 volts out, and I had nothing going in here. Another trick was these grounds are not earth referenced, so just measuring from earth ground to here, any point on here was way off. I believe it was kind of a high voltage. So I had to find a proper ground, so I found this ground here, found a capacitor that was tied to this ground that I was able to use kind of as a probing point. Um, but the voltage in was almost nothing, if I remember correctly, and no voltage going out, or a very low voltage going out. The service manual also had some troubleshooting flow diagrams. So I kind of went through this, a little bit confusing. Um, I mean, aside from checking resistors, that's simple enough. This one here is resistor value not equal to zero to several ohms and it was higher than zero to several ohms. So, But since that's not equal that's a yes is the answer so then it was down to here. Measured some more resistors and then here's that 220 ohm that turned out to be the problem. And they say replace the resistor plus this Q414 which is this IGBT and I just did both of these at the same time rather than take the risk of putting the resistor in turn it on and then it'd instantly burn up if this is bad so since this was open there had to be a high current flow through that to burn it up so this would almost have to be conducting and if this failed it might have been in a shorted state where it allowed current to find another path to ground which was much more much lower impedance okay and here's the main power supply PCB pull the two halves of the unit apart and then you have access to the top of this board and down here I have the front panel just laying face down power switches over here so tracing the power lines basically goes through the switch and I found these two resistors are in parallel with this relay 
So once this relay turns on, it bypasses these. So I believe that's that soft start circuit. Unit turns on, power goes through here with less current. And then once the unit is ready, it turns this relay on, bypasses these resistors, and then sends the full current voltage through. And the fuse, that was okay. And then after this fuse, the voltage goes up to this big uh, bridge rectifier is mounted to this heat sink. So you can measure voltage going in there, AC, and then the DC voltage coming out. And then these are the big uh, main filter caps. They're rated at 200 volts each. And this is the main transformer. So left is your primary side. And you can see this dotted line here. It's kind of where the isolation is done. So nothing crosses this except the transformer and this um, optical coupler. And these lines here are your main DC rails for your amplifier section. And the main component that failed was this R440 right here. So I got a new one in here. And then this is that IGBT that they recommend replacing if this resistor fails. So this has also been replaced. And now the unit works. And something to watch for when reassembling the unit is all these shielding connections that go to these screw points. Um, this is just kind of an adhesive here that so this can easily come off. So when you put it together you want to make sure that's staying on there here. And then all these uh, metal points here for them. And to reassemble you need kind of a long driver bit. This is the setup I'm going to use to do a frequency response plot and then also a total harmonic distortion plot. And I'm just going to use a power level around 100 watts and into an 8 ohm load. So I've got a mixer here. The out speaker output is going to go into this load here, which is just a um, 8 ohm resistor. And then I've got a few things hooked up to measure that. This oscilloscope here. We'll just measure the speaker load, so that should show a sine wave. And I've got a differential probe here. Some amplifiers, the ground of the speaker might not necessarily be earth ground, and scopes usually have an earth ground reference, so I have this differential probe, um, kind of just as a safety measure, just in case the speaker output is not earth grounded. And over here I have a HP8903A, which does the signal generation out of this output and then it measures the input here. So this will come from the speaker output of the mixer which is connected to the 8 ohm load. And then when I do the distortion measurement I'll probably unhook some of this extra stuff. This was just a precaution to make sure that the ground reference doesn't float too much above earth ground otherwise I can't use this ground lift method it makes it more difficult to use this piece of equipment. If I earth ground it, these have the same issue of the mixer. If that's not earth grounded on the speaker outputs, you'd be basically shorting the negative of the speaker output to earth ground. In this case, I believe it is earth grounded, but I'm using the floating inputs anyway. And then this second scope here I have hooked up to this port here. Um, the blue channel, channel 2, is just to look for an offset on the earth ground. So I'm hoping to see nothing there, or very little. And then the other channel is just an output of the HP8903, which will kind of show the distortion, and it automatically levels it to a certain range. For the frequency response test, channel 1 here will just show the frequency sine wave. Here's a little closer view of my load box. There's some 100 watt resistors in here so I can get different combinations of 4, 8, and 16 ohms. Um, so this input here is directly from the speaker A port on the amplifier. And then I'm running a 
signal in to just one of the channels. I have everything set EQ flat and then the level set to a certain level and then I'll adjust the master. I have it set so when this is all the way up I'll get about 100 watts and then this I won't change. And then the output here is going to an oscilloscope and a multimeter for AC voltage RMS. And then this port here will go to the analyzer. Okay, and before I test the amplifier itself, I'm just going to get a baseline measurement of the instrument reading its own output. It should confirm that it's got a very flat frequency response. So then I have a uh, lab view controlling the instrument. So I've got the level set to 1000 millivolts, which is 1 volt. And then I'm measuring it in AC dB volts. And I'm set to 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz. So once it starts, this will show the frequency. And this will show the level in dBV. And then you should see the frequency sweep here. Hit run. And that's done, and then I can go to the graph. This is very zoomed in, that's why it looks like it's a big difference from top to bottom. Zero at the bottom, and it went up to 0 0.04. So it's within that range. So next I'll unplug this output. And I'll move that to this speaker output, which is in parallel with the load. And then I'm going to take this input here and plug it in to the output of the HP8903. So the HP8903 is going to send the signal to the input of the mixer. So I adjusted the mixer so I have 28.3 volts coming out. That's around 100 watts. Okay, I have channel A set and I'll hit run. Preview graph here. It looks like this is done, so I'll go to the graph. So our baseline is down here at zero. That's very flat. I could add a correction factor so it's overlaid on here, but you can see the blue line is fairly flat too. So now I'll switch to channel B and repeat the same test and see if both channels are similar. Okay, hooked up speaker port B, renamed it channel B here. I'll turn up the output 1K and again we have about 28 point some volts. And I'll run the sweep. Okay, and here's the graph. See both channels are basically on top of each other. I'll zoom in so I can maybe see a little more difference. Change the bottom to 25. Try 28. So each division is about 0.2 dB, so that's pretty close. Okay, now for harmonic distortion I'll do basically the same thing. I'm going to take this input, plug it into the instrument itself, and get a baseline for distortion of the instrument because you can't measure any lower than the instrument itself. And I also disconnected the probe here just.